Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to describe morphology of fish. As you know that morphology is the study of structures of organisms. There are two types of morphology, external morphology and internal morphology. In external morphology, we usually discuss the structures of external body parts of a living organism and internal morphology or anatomy in which we study internal structure of living organism. So today we are going to discuss external morphology of a fish. As you know that fish are specialized animal which belongs to phylum chordata. They live in water, they are aquatic and usually they have gills and fins on their body. They also have scales on their body and which are very uh, specialized or important characters of the fish. To understand the morphology of fish, we need to look at the diagram of a fish. Now let's move on to the diagram. So this is a diagram of a journal fish. There are anterior side on which there is a mouth present and there is posterior side where tail is located. This is the dorsal side of the fish and this is the ventral side of the fish. Dorsal side is usually on the back and the ventral side is the belly side. And there are also two other side which are known as lateral side which is right and the left side of the fish. The body of the fish can be divided into three main parts which are head, trunk and tail. Although head and trunk cannot be differentiated because these fishes do not have neck. So anyhow, we can look at the, when we look at the fish, there is head is visible and the rest of the body is known as trunk and the posterior end there is a tail. If we look at the head, there is an opening which is known as mouth. Mouth is usually terminal, but sometimes it is also located on the ventral side of the mouth. Mouth is used for feeding purpose and also it also has other function which is drinking water and taking water which pass over the gills just present uh, uh, behind the mouth for the purpose of breathing or respiration as you know that fish uses gills for breathing absorbing oxygen from the water just on the top of the dorsal side of the mouth there are pair of openings known as nares or nostrils. These nostrils or nares are used for sensory purpose. These are not used for breathing or respiration in most of the fishes. So these uh, nostrils have some receptors which can signals, which can receive chemical stimuli from the water and helps fish to navigate in the fish. Just behind the nair, there is an uh, there is a structure which is known as eye. Eye, as you know, that is used for vision. But most of the fishes they live in such an environment where there is no light. Usually they live in dark water or filthy water, so they totally uh, depend on lateral line system and nares which have sensory organs to locomote or to navigate in the water. The anterior and which is composed of a head, usually composed of pair of bones on both sides of the head, which are known as operculum. Operculums are bony structures present on the lateral sides of the head. These operculum usually covers gills, which are present just underneath these bony structures, operculums. Just behind the head, there is a main body part which is known as trunk. This trunk is usually covered by scales. There are different types of scales present on different species of the fish which we will discuss in the upcoming lecture. Some fish are usually scaleless. They do not have their scales on the body but other fishes usually they have scales all over their body. 
the trunk has some appendages not limbs append which are known as fins which are paired and unpaired and they are of different types these fins helps to locomote and perform different functions for the for the fish on the dorsal side if you look right over here there is a spiny dorsal fin which is composed of spines or rays which is which are like which are very hard so these fins are usually unpaired just behind the spiny dorsal fins is a soft dorsal fin which also contain rays which are spiny in nature and uh, this fin is little bit softer than the spiny one on the back of the fish on the back of the trunk there is a narrow portion which is known as peduncle which leads into tail or caudal fin caudal fin is also uh, unpaired and it is usually provide thirst to the fish when fish suddenly wants to move forward it moves very fast just like a fan in the water and fish propel and, and it propels the fish in the forward direction on the ventral side if you look right over here there is an anal fin which is located just near the anus which helps to disperse or helps in the reproductive organs if we look at the lateral and the dorsal and the ventral side of the body there are two types of fins one is known as pectoral fins and other are known as pelvic fins pectoral fins are present on both sides right and left sides of the body and uh, they and the pelvic fins are also present on the ventral side uh, attached to the belly these both types of fin helps to steer fish in the water that uh, fish can move towards right side or the left side so fins are the appendages which helps animals to locomote in water if we look at the both lateral sides on the trunk of the body and fish you can see a line right over here in the purple color i have shown right over here this lateral line is composed of lateral line system lateral line system is a specialized system which is very sensory water enters in lateral line system through tiny pores any small vibration or movement in the water can be detected by lateral line system so the fish is living in dark water they can detect any kind of movement in the water with the help of a lateral line system so we will discuss this system in detail later in in later videos now let's uh, as you know that the fishes are present uh, uh, in water and there are many thousand species of the fishes and they are found in all sizes and all shapes but i have taken some common or very important shapes of the body and we will discuss them in detail fishes are present in different shapes the first form i have shown right over here in the diagram is known as fusiform fusiform is usually in the form of spindle and uh, they are pointed on the ends and it is thicker from the center just like an aeroplane so that it can uh, pass through the water Uh, so that a dragging force or the friction can be reduced these fishes are pointed at the front from the anterior end and the posterior end these fishes are known as fusiform tuna is the very important example of fusiform fish second type of fish are compressiform they usually compressed from the lateral side so their body is just like uh, fusiform but the body has been compressed laterally so these example of this fish is known as tatog the other form is depressive form depressive form is also compressed but it is dorso ventrally compressed just like a leaf so example of this fish are known as skates and rays very important anguliform fishes are usually in the form of long snake shaped body so these fishes are very long and have snake like body the example of anguliform fish is eel some fishes are ribbon like just like tapeworm so these fishes are usually known as tiny form and example of this fish is ribbon fish some fishes sometime becomes globiform they are like globose or bulb shape 
and uh, these fishes are known as globiform used example of globiform fishes is known as puffer fish when they are annoyed and when they are disturbed they have become balloon like so that is why they are known as puffer fish so i hopefully it makes sense and that's all for today see you in the next lecture until then bye